And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some mid-range frostbite. This deck is just really good. It's rank up Sunday, so this is the day of the week that we play more of the tier one decks, and this is definitely up there. It's the kind of deck that I like to play. I've always enjoyed playing Ash Sejuani decks. Um, even though this one is super, super powerful. Um, so this is going to be our uh, next deck today. Uh, yeah, nothing really to say about this deck. I'm sure you all have seen this plenty. We play it you know, about once a week or every other week or so here on Rank Up Sunday. We did last week for sure. And uh, yeah, so not too much to say about this one. We're just going to go straight into playing our five games. And we'll see how we do. Um, I am using, for those of y'all watching on YouTube, if you didn't hear me during the Garen Chen video, I, I did get a new cord. You know, keep on trying out things to try to get rid of the problems with the left and right um, for headphone listeners that have had that. Uh, let's see. Do I want to keep all of these? Usually, I would be mulligating more of these Iceville Archers. But I think because we have this Ash, and also Iceville Archer plus Glory Seeker is a nice combo, I'm going to keep them all. Alright, but anyway, um, so this is a really long cord that instead of being plugged into my keyboard, the USB on my keyboard, which is what I have had, this is getting plugged into the back of the CPU. So, hopefully that all helps. The chains, they never stop! Warden's Prey is just awesome. I need just a moment. Yeah, it's just rank up Sunday. We're playing this deck. For those of y'all that have been watching the stream for a long time, you may know you may remember that the very first day that Rising Tides was released, I I played this. Ash Sejuani. It was a little bit different. I didn't have Avaros and Trapper. It was just a tiny bit different. But we played Ash Sejuani the very first day um, that it was released whenever everybody else was on just full-on aggro and full-on control. We played this deck, went 5-0. So basically, I was, I'm saying that I was playing this deck before. It was cool. Yeah, I'd caught in the cold. I didn't ha I don't think I really had So like yeah, I didn't have like the Trapper cuz I had the, you know, the Challenge Wolf and Legion Drummer. I didn't really have Culling Strike. A glow. I had caught in the cold instead of Culling Strike. And yes, Culling Strike is better. Um I guess I just frostbite one of these things. Keep them from killing my stuff. Puts me down to five. Dang, Blighted Caretaker is crazy. All right, I'm not gonna protect. I'm not gonna use Brittle Steel and protect this three one. So Ash is at two. Faster than my arrow? I think not. Oh, what's that noise? Show me a target. I'll cut them apart. Face me. You have to get me out of here. So it is, while it is really enticing to play Ash, I wonder if it would have been better to play Trapper plus Archer to get two blockers out there, but Iceville Archer, not a great blocker. Dude, I'm telling you, Warden's Prey is just awesome. Warden's Prey is so good. I'm 
protect the villages. Lead the target. I guess this gives them three spiders if they have another Elise. Should be getting drawing some one mana five fives. Seven mana. These three cards in hand cost seven mana. It can't be. We're gonna be trying to draw into frostbite cards. want to draw is frostbite cards I guess if I didn't play enraged oh no that doesn't really matter hmm so we can put the crystal arrow on top And draw it with assessor, but then I don't. I don't have the mana to play it. The true Fanyorian welcome. I'll lead us to victory. Shouldn't have played this. I shouldn't have played the one mana five five, but then I would have had I would have had to play Icefell Archer first, which we couldn't have done anyway. So I guess this this just wouldn't have worked out as far as killing them this turn goes. So like okay like let's say I didn't play the Yeti what was I gonna so I would have had to I guess so I would have had to play the Ice Skull Archer first and then you are in the right to call themselves Trifarian and then after yeah like so I would have had to lead lead with the Ice Skull Archer and then play Crystal Arrow. Could it, maybe it could have worked. Could have possibly worked. Forgive me, Averosa. So I think I should have mulliganed a lot of those cards. So I kept, yeah, I kept those two Icefield Archers and the five-one Challenger. It just didn't work out with those cards. I think I should have mulliganed all three of those, to be honest. I don't usually like those cards in this matchup with them having the one health. They're just so poor against all of those little units that uh, that, that Endure deck throws around that they have all those 1-1s one -ones and 2-1 challengers. I just don't, I don't think I'm supposed to keep those cards. I tried it there with the Ash, but it, it really did not work out. So I think next time I'm going to uh, mulligan all of those. But I also potentially could have had Lethal Legend didn't play my Enraged Yeti. I think I could have done the... It's possible I could have done the 20 damage by doing the Icefell Archer and then Assessor and then a Crystal Arrow. So yeah, it looks like playing the Enraged Yeti was a mistake.
Yeah, and you're probably right there, Hamster. After I once I did play the Yeti, then there probably wasn't any reason to play my Icefield Archer afterwards, and that um, I could have just played just played the four three. Not worry about frostbiting that eleven eleven. You know, like we don't need to do that. And then I would have drawn uh, three cards because I would have the three five power units at the time instead of just the two and we would not have had the crystal arrow on top so we would have drawn closer Open to wide. looking for burst speed frostbite for the 11 11 which was something that was necessary Yeah, and yep, there are the three copies of Harshwind, so it's a good possibility that that could have happened. Idiots. Faster than my arrow? I think not. There's plenty of killing left. Success gets you noticed around here. Pretty slow hand here, not really having, you know, not having a two mana or a three mana unit. But we're starting to catch up. From the savage cold. So Ash is always was vulnerable anyway. How do I want to do this? Is that one out of five? All right, I think this is a harsh wind's turn with Sejuani the next turn. Stand and fight. Open wide, sugar. This is our homeland. Do you really need to get rid of this gangplank? Like a fish in water. <laughs> Swiftly now. I'll lead us to victory. Our plan is the pulling strike on the gangplank. Which is why I didn't um so I didn't use elixir of iron to save my hearth guard last turn because I need the six mana. Uh, my Sejuani plus the three mana. Four cooling strike here. Riptide Rex, huh? Oh, 
Riptide Rex. All right, what are we doing? Are we playing, I guess we play Archer to try to eat more cannon barrages. A true Fragorian welcome. Ready, Rex? Not yet! Go to go! Uh, so one, two, three, four. So four going to Ash. Right? One, two, three, four. And then two here. So I cannot save Ash, even with double Elixir of Iron. I can save the 5-3 with an Elixir of Iron. Which I think we should do that. Right, we'll just play this crystal arrow right now to uh, draw a card. That's interesting. I have 12 mana. We think they just go to their turn. If I pass. Possibly. I rarely forget and never forgive. It's the boss! Your respect. Nope. Played Gangplank. That's what I wanted to see. Now this of course does like a, I hope they don't have another Sejuani. Right, like another another Sejuani coming up here. I don't have you know, with me using that other harsh winds now, I don't have another harsh winds to uh, protect against it. Attack. My glory seeker doesn't block. So definitely worried about taking six damage this next turn. Not my first gun fight. Well fought. So there's a new celestial card. Bounty hole. A zero mana 2-1 challenger. So you just get a sapling that doesn't have ephemeral. Basically. Fight or die. Patience. Alright, deal nine. They're at nine. Ooh, we got there. I did not think we were really getting there this game. Thought we were too far behind with having no unit to play on turn two or turn three. Having nothing between Omen Hawk and Ash. Um, and them curving out like that, I thought that we were not going to get there.
So that card is a Celestial there, Bipolar, and basically what that means is there there's a new um, keyword of cards from Targon that draws um, Celestial cards. They're not cards that you put in your deck, as far as I'm aware. This is a matchup we lost just a little bit ago. I must get out of here. Nothing escapes my watch. Well, that's not good. Because they could just have, you know, the Blighted Caretaker combo. I sure hope not. Okay, no Blighted Caretaker this turn, at least. A chill in the air. Nothing but Ice Bell Archers. So obviously I want to save Ice Bell Archer to pair with Culling Strike. Um, man, this is just so such an awkward hand. Nothing but Ice Bell Archers. Real. Nothing escapes my watch. Knocked and ready. Stay back. I would have loved to have you a few turns ago. You're exactly what I wanted to have. Bow to no one. A chill in the air. All right, Sejuani gone. That's good. Three out of five, as far as Ash is concerned. Will probably be a bad place for a they who endure for me. And a frostbite and the Avros and Sentry, because I don't want to block that thing. I'll block these things. I don't mind blocking the 3-2s and the 4-3s. But I don't want to block Avros and Sentries. Right out. My light for Avarosa. I just want to wait off on them drawing cards as long as I can. Don't want to give them more cards. And 
course, not worried about that. I will unite the Freljord. Today, Ash, you'll see true leadership. Today, Ash. I guess I didn't really think that through of how now that thing's going to be able to kill Ash. That's kind of my bad. Yeah, I didn't really think that one through. It's alright. Fourth thing, we have one they who endure the torches. down. Wow. Never mind, they just want to draw their cards. I'm glad the 4 3 is not blocking my 6 4. Light the signal fires. Pretty happy about that. Yeah, I, I think it would make sense for there to be a new reward region now with Targon. I think that would... That would make sense. Lady Elise, where are you? I don't think that... I don't think they'll have, like, add on to the rest of the regions. I don't think they will. It'll probably just be a new region road with... See the Devastian border from here. With Targon, that'd be kind of what I'm thinking. All right, they got tons of card draw there that that turn. <laughs> Sejuani's nowhere near leveled up. Of course. And that's okay. Bow to no one. I'm just going to play this crystal arrow right now. <laughs> Let's slow down on the whole challenge and kill my Sejuani and all that kind of stuff. Let's slow down on all that. Hmm. I don't think I Reckoning. Nah. Cards are good. So I can keep them from drawing three. Oh no, I only keep them from drawing two cards if I calling strike. I don't let them have the cards and keep calling strike. So I can make it so they can't block. All right, harsh winds into flash freeze, and then attack so they they can't block. Um, we have 18 power here. They're at 16. They would have to have fury of the north to then block. So they they could you know so it wouldn't necessarily be game. They could have fury of the north. Um, I don't think there's that much downside to it because we still have a harsh winds. So I think that this is a, you know, pretty high upside with not much right. downside. Oh, I need to do the Spiderling. Uh, I messed up. I need to 
I'm, and I meant to, in my mind, I was going to do that, but then I just, I just don't know what happened. I just went over and clicked the 4-3, but, you know, like, how, as you saw, I did that Spiderling. That's, that's like what I meant to do the whole time in my mind, but, you know, I was just talking through my play, and then I just clicked the 4-3, and I didn't click the Spiderling. And obviously, you know, right whenever I clicked it, I was like, no, what am I doing? Uh... Well, it's unfortunate. You fought well. That's too bad. Probably should have just won that game right there. Let's see what you've got. Oh, I can't reckoning this turn. Prove your worth. No, it's not over. They have used all three of their Glimpse Beyonds. They won't be drawing too many more cards. They've gone through a lot of cards. They're at 16 left. I'm at 22 left. They've gone through a lot of cards with all three Glimpse Beyonds and all three Averroes and Sentries. The problem with playing this Assessor is it only draws one card, and also I have this Reckoning as well. Stand and fight! Oh, I gotta get out of here! They, they, they just Which one is that? Four out of five? Leave no survivors. This will be quick.
I'd much rather use Brittle Steel, but I kind of need to do two things. Like, I want to Brittle Steel just, like, like either the Warden's Prayer or the Curse Keeper um, to keep the Sejuani from leveling up before... Or, like, you know, keep the Frostbite from happening before these deal damage. But the problem with that is... Problem with just using the Brittle Steel would be all the damage that Sejuani would deal right now, also. like to draw Enraged Yeti right here. No. Okay, that's not too bad, though. Man, this is a mess. Born for conquest. I mean, obviously, I messed this whole game up earlier. What did we catch? With that, the flash freeze. Not putting it on the 1 1. This game should be over. Another century? Didn't they already play multiple of those? Oh, I guess Warden's Prey made a fourth century for them. Gosh, they've drawn so many cards. Well, that was that game was my fault. I had lethal, and I just misclicked. Where, where? They did a great job having Averroes and Sentry and Glimpse Beyond to rifle through the deck, having four Averroes and Sentries and three Glimpse Beyonds. Yeah, so close. And I, I was too... I needed to fire off the Reckoning earlier to kill that Sejuani. I was too hesitant on on that card. I'll just keep all of these. I don't think I'm going to play Ice Veil vale Archer on turn two. But I'm still just going to keep it to have later on in the game. It's, it's a really nice card to have to double spell with later on in the game. That game was frustrating. I ended up making a lot of decisions that did not work out for me. Gotcha.
Uh, yeah, Ash Sad John Wani will still be viable after the new expansion comes out, yes. The only way it won't be is if there are a bunch of nerfs to the deck also on, you know, this week. Because I do think they are going to be having some balance changes this week that we should know about on in two days on the 25th is when they would tell us about that but i think there should be some balance changes but we don't know what those can be we don't know what those would be yet magic must be stopped before it spreads Detain's pretty good. Go ahead and play the Sejuani. I don't have, you know, any other spell man. Like this is gonna be my only thing for the the turn. But I definitely like that vulnerable. Try to get rid of this challenger because the challenger can take out Ash. Oh, also I guess we can just attack and have a leveled up Ash, and just have them not block. Now they have the so they have the detain. They would detain something. They detain one of my attackers. So assuming they detain Ash. They take 10 and go down to 3 in this scenario. Um, or I get to kill this 4-3 challenger and not go for lethal. Which, you know, we're not really going for lethal. We're, we're putting them down to 3 and having Ash get detained. Maybe we do a little bit of both. My aim is true. So they don't use detain, they take Yeah, so that Okay, so yeah, we're doing a little bit of both. So this would put them down to five if they do use detain. Instead of down to three, but or put them to six. Sorry, put them to six, but then um the persuader is gone. They could detain Sejuani and then go down to one. All right, so they got six cards left. I got four. If we can figure out a way to get rid of the Mage Seeker Investigator, we can get Ash back. No. I'm doing this my way. On their side. Mm. On their side, they're probably hoping to have. Purify for this thing. These old eyes still see far and clear. I need just a moment. Glory. 
So of course, I just want to make this trade. A lot of spells. Trust my instincts. Enough stalling. All right, we're two and two. Really should be three and one. I misclicked. With that other loss. <clears throat> Hopefully pick this one up and then go to a good three three and two. We'll have a nice three and two day. So far, if we pick this one up. So Glory Seeker is super easy to kill. But also, if they can't kill, can pressure quite a bit, being five, you know, a five-one. It's a difficult call whether or not to keep Glory Seeker. To be honest, maybe just keep one. There's times where I've you know played this kind of matchup and it had Glory Seekers, and they just static shock them, and, and it looks terrible. And there's other times where they haven't had the removal and the glory seekers just do tons and tons of damage and kill them super fast. Alright, Storm Event, this is they have the name that you wanted, Storm. And maybe I should just play that to to attack with because I had the elixir of iron to protect. I'm not gonna fight over that. The the, the one health thing. I'm just not gonna fight over it. At this point. Um. Yeah. Out of cards has all the, the new ones. Here you go. That updates with the new cards. They also have a, a new page with the 24 hours of reveals, which is this right here Ancient things trapped in the ice. Yeah, I wanted Hearthguard. Avros and Hearthguard is the card that we want uh, in this matchup. Especially with these Assessors. Definitely just want Avros and Hearthguard. All right, we will fight over this one. As the arrow flies. I, uh, Excuse you. I, uh, Down to ten. Only 
the finest serve. Cool. Line up. There's Hearthguard. That's what we want. at 10. Can we get 10 damage across? Unify the tribes. Won't be real easy. The trap is set. I think the 4-1 can already block the 5-4. The dragon. Peace has its cost. By force of will, act with conviction. Okay, that was a, definitely a good turn for them. on over to me. So we can kill Karma with Sejuani plus Calling Strike. Um, I don't have to, though. Now, they could go Ezreal, Mystic Shot. Like, if, if I play... Oh no, because I'd still have Calling Strike. So I kind of want to play this Hearth Guard first. And just get it in play. I'm going to do that. So the, the reason why I'm not that concerned about killing Karma is because they have nine cards. So if they go to their next turn... Then they generate, you know, they will generate a free card, but then they'll have to burn one. And I would rather them generate a free card than get a random card in their deck. All right, well that makes it worse. The world's a big place. Let's see all. Of it. No. <laughs> that was the fastest going strike I've ever seen. Do we want to challenge Karma? I I'm going to do the 2 1. So it'll make it difficult for them to keep Karma alive and keep themselves alive. 
like where they can probably use a easy removal spell to do that. You know, like so they basically like force them to have like Mystic Shot plus Concussive Palm. Ah, so they had two stuns. So you know they they did have the ability to keep Karma alive, but made it difficult on them to do that by having the Avarosan Sentry. Okay, well this is where things could get bad. We're able to level up karma. My spirit is an unquenchable fire. Where things could get quite bad. Time for a true display of skill. Few earn the right to call themselves Trifarian. Hmm. No so removal. Dangerous. I'm in. on fighting when you could step aside you cannot tell the wind to change direction it's exactly where karma Ezreal wants to be have both their champions in play they're about both going to be leveled up. Have millions of cards in hand. I like attacking a small Averosa, a big stand together. Face me. So them doing that, I'm kind of assuming that they're gonna be able to kill me, I assume, with the Braum wave, because people don't do the Braum wave unless they're you know, unless they're like the the person winning the game. So I think my opponent is telling me that they're going to be winning this game. Your attack is obvious. So that's what it looks like with no, like, you know, we need to draw, like, Reckoning or, Reckoning, Culling Strike. Those are the cards that we're looking for. We have four total copies of those. We've seen one Culling Strike so far. We killed one Ezreal with a Culling Strike. We need uh, more, you know, we need other. So out of those, you know, we have six total no, Culling Strikes and Reckonings. And we've only seen one in half of our deck so far. We need to up that. Huh. So now they're blo not blocking this thing. They didn't put this back as a blocker. So they deserve for the Braum wave. Hopefully they don't have another Steel Tempest. It's the only card that saves them. I 
don't think they're too happy with themselves right now. Going with the Braum wave. And then mess it up and lose. <laughs> All right, so three and two, and I guess that's probably about where we should have been. I messed up. I misclicked one game against the They Who Endure. We definitely should have won that. But that last game against Karma Ezreal probably should have lost that one. So I guess they kind of even out. <laughs> Braum wave denied. That's why just don't don't Braum wave. Just just make sure you can actually win. All right, but yeah, this deck's awesome. Um, things that I, I, I've talked about before of like some things about this deck that could probably change and just in generals, I, I think that assessor should just be when I'm summoned, draw one, if you have a five plus power ally, so it just draws one and it's not a card that's, you know, a draw three, draw four. It's not four mana progress day where you also get a four, three. I think that card can change. Um, I do think Sejuani should be a 5-5, five five, not a 5-6. I think the 6th point of health uh, makes it too strong compared to the rest of the champions. And I think to, to even it out, it should be a 5-5. Five five. And, you know, it can still do all this awesome stuff. And it's still like a removal spell whenever you play it with Overwhelm. But I do think it should be a 5-5. Five five. And then, as I've mentioned before with Ash, this, this line here with Ash is incredible is just so incredibly powerful that pairing this with like harsh winds and everything it's just this thing is this part is not really that fair i don't know i don't know what would be a good ash ability for leveling up like i don't know um i i you know i don't have any like league of legends experience of what ash is like in league of legends but i i don't like this Ability now I've I mean I've played a ton of this card and I've, I've used this ability a ton and and surprise killed people all the time But with when you when we have a game where you are limited on the amount of units you can play how you can only have six and uh, It's not like You know like making things can't block it's not like you can go wider and just play more and more units so that you know Some things can't block but you can block with others It's just you know really really powerful um, but obviously we need Ash to do something whenever Ash is leveled up. I just don't know what that should be. But those are some things that I would look into changing with this deck. Um, also, Riptide Rex. <laughs> I would definitely change Riptide Rex as well. All right. Uh, that's it for Midrange Frostbite. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and feel free to leave those comments as well. I would really appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.